The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. Welcome to The David Pakman Show. It is a Wednesday. It's getting warm out there, Lewis, I must say. Is that why you're wearing your David Pakman Show t-shirt and nothing else? I mean, obviously, <laughs> let me let me back up for a second. He's obviously wearing socks, no shoes, interestingly enough, you know, pants and presumably underpants and all that stuff, but only a t-shirt as your, as your top. I think people can clearly see that. Yeah. Except for the radio listeners. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I wanted to be clear. But is that why you're wearing the t-shirt? Yeah, it's pretty warm out. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Dukhar Tsarnaev has admitted to setting bombs with his brother Tamerlan, according to a source as written by the Boston Globe. This comes before, supposedly, he was Mirandized. So right away, Lewis, even though much ado about nothing is the claim, we already have questions about, well, when exactly did he say it and is it admissible? Right. And um, that, uh, we can't really answer that, but I'm sure... Our government can. So the Boston Globe says that uh, Zahar admitted on Sunday to authorities that he and his brother were indeed behind the Boston Marathon bombings. And he also made admissions about uh, a number of other things, including, uh, well, just just a lot of different stuff, saying that they acted alone and, and just all this stuff. And uh, FBI agents interviewed him at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, where he's being treated for gunshot wounds. He had not been given a Miranda warning at the time he made the admission. So there is no question, according to a number of different legal experts, that whoever ends up representing Zohar Tsarnaev in the eventual trial, they will challenge the legal admissibility of those admissions and of other information that Zohar has given, including that he and his brothers have act he and his brother acted alone and that his brother was radicalized in an extreme form of Islam in part because he was against U.S. actions in Iraq and Afghanistan. All of that, realistically, is going to now be challenged from the start by his attorneys because it supposedly took place before he was Mirandized. But that being said, a senior poli police official said authorities aren't really worried about that because they have a very strong witness, the man who was abducted by the Tsarnaev brothers on Thursday night. And they said, we're going to New York. We are the Boston bombers. We've got weapons or whatever else it was that was said. And that that in combination with the fact that there was this public safety exception used is not going to take away from the admissibility. However, at this point on the day after this, when we had on MSNBC's Chris Hayes show, someone say, you know, they may not be Mirandized. And I said, this could be a basis for an argument in court. It seems it probably will end up happening. It may not work, but it's going to happen. Yeah, I think either way, uh, whoever's defending him is, is going to have a uh an uphill battle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would would you ever, like if you were in a situation where you had to be the public defender for Tzahar Tsarnaev, what do you do? I mean, you, you take the case, right? You, if you're assigned the case, you take it. I don't think you really have a choice. Uh, I mean, you could you could say that the stress is literally killing you and you, you have to, you know, physically you're unable to do it or if you find some way to recuse yourself. I mean, yeah, that's a good question, right? I mean, can you get to a point where you could even put together a defense that you could you could you do it give him a vigorous defense i'm sure someone out there can natan right i mean if you believe in the legal system you believe he's entitled to a defense he is not an enemy combatant he's going to be tried in a regular court how do you get yourself mentally to a point where you say i need to do everything i can to defend this individual well, it depends on what uh, the accused wants. I mean, maybe he wants to plead guilty and avoid the death penalty if he can. Maybe he wants to plead not guilty and then he wants like a defense against the prosecution's evidence. If it's the first case, then, you know, if he just admits to it, you know, cooperates, maybe he can get some sort of a possible benefit. Whereas if he doesn't, you know, there's a very small chance here that he's going to be actually set free and there's a higher chance of the death penalty. Right. Absolutely. You know that somewhere out there, there's a defense attorney who says, oh, I want to see how far I could take this. I, I Saddam Hussein had a defense attorney, right? I mean, uh, yeah. No, OJ. What's that? OJ. That's a slightly different situation. Yes. Well, I mean, there, there's someone out there who's saying, I wonder if I could get this kid. Um, yeah. The thing is, I understand cases where we can kind of have a colloquial understanding that the person did what they're accused of doing, but still say there is a legal system that has rules and the case has to be proven following those rules. And regardless of what this person did, I don't believe that that has happened. And therefore, they are entitled to 
a defense that will argue they did not do this by the book, right? This is a case that just is so heinous that it's harder to imagine taking that uh, uh, kind of legal point of view. Seems crazy to me.